Hey you guys, this is Mr. Mellings and in this video we are going to learn how to calculate molecular formulas. Now in an earlier video we learned about the differences between empirical formulas versus uh, molecular formulas and in a subsequent video we learned how to calculate empirical formulas. In this video we are going to learn how to calculate the molecular formula for different compounds. So let's take a look at an example here. It says a compound is 75.46% carbon, 4.43% hydrogen, and 20.10% oxygen by mass. It has a molecular weight of 318.34 grams per mole. What is the molecular formula for this compound? So when we're given a question like this, what we first need to do is we first need to determine what the empirical formula for this compound is going to be. So in an earlier video, you remember the, uh, the, the four steps that we have right here to calculating the empirical formula for different compounds. So let's go ahead and do that. The first step is to assume that we have a 100 gram sample of this compound. If so, then we have 75.46 grams of carbon. We have 4.43 grams of hydrogen and we have 20 0.10 grams of oxygen. All right, so the first thing we did is to assume that we have uh, a 100 gram sample of this stuff and these percentages get turned into grams down here. Next thing we need to do is convert the grams that we have here to moles. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to convert the grams of each one of these elements to moles by using the periodic table of elements. We know one mole of carbon, if we take a look, is 12.01 grams. We know that one mole of hydrogen is going to be, if we take a look right here, 1.01 grams. And we know that one mole of oxygen, if we look right here, is going to be 16 grams or 16.00 grams. So we'll put this in our calculator and we'll end up with 6.283 moles of carbon. We're going to end up with 4. 386 moles of hydrogen and we're going to end up with 1.256 moles of oxygen. All right, so we just finished uh, step two. We converted the grams to moles. In step three, we need to divide each mole value by the smallest amount of moles present here. What is the smallest of these three values here? It's going to be 1.256 and we're going to divide each one of these by 1.256. And we'll divide this by 1.256 and we will end up with 5 here. We're going to end up with 3.5 here. And we're going to end up with 1 here. Okay, so we cannot have subscripts that have decimals. So we somehow need to convert this to a whole number. The way that we do that is to multiply each one of these subscripts by 2. And we learned this in an earlier video and I recommend you go review the video on calculating empirical formulas, but we're basically paying attention to this step right here. Okay, and we're going to end up with 10, we're going to end up with 7, and we're going to end up with 2. So our empirical formula for this compound is going to be, it looks like C10, uh, H7, and O2. That is our empirical formula, but the question here is asking for the molecular formula. So how do we get the molecular formula? Well, we have to figure out what the molar mass of this substance is. Well, to get the molar mass, we learned in an earlier video, you take 10 times the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.01, seven times the molar mass of hydrogen, 1.01, and two times the molar mass of oxygen, 16, and add all of that together, and we will end up with 159.17 grams per mole. So that is our molar mass of the empirical formula right here. However, it tells us that the molar mass of the actual formula or the actual compound or the molecular formula is 318.34. So what we need to do in this last step here is we take the molar mass of the molecular formula and we're gonna divide this by the molar mass of the empirical formula. So the molar mass of the molecular formula is 318.34 grams per mole. And the molar mass of the empirical formula, it says right here, is 159.17 grams per mole. 
So when we get our answer here, our answer is going to be this magic number two. So what we do with this two now is we're going to distribute this two to every single subscript in the empirical formula. And if we do that, if we distribute this two throughout this entire thing right here, we will end up with our final answer, our molecular formula of C20H14. Oh, 04. That is going to be our final answer. So there's a lot of steps here. I recommend going back and reviewing these steps, pausing and rewinding and making sure that you understand what we just did. In this step or in all these steps up here, we calculated the empirical formula. That empirical formula was right here. Okay. What we then did is we found the molar mass of the empirical formula to be this right here. The question gave us the molar mass of the molecular formula. So we take the molar mass of the molecular formula divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula, and that gives us this magic number of two. This is always gonna be a whole number in these types of problems. You then distribute that throughout the empirical formula, and you will get your final answer. That is the molecular formula for this compound. Let's take another, uh, let's take a look at another example, one in which, uh, the empirical formula is already given and you don't need to do all of these steps right here. In example two, it says a compound has the empirical formula CH2O. The molar mass of the compound is 180.18 grams per mole. We need to determine the compound's molecular formula. So in this problem here, in this example, the empirical formula is already given to us. It's CH2O. So this is a lot easier uh, of a problem. And then it tells us that the molecular formulas molar mass is going to be 180.18. We have to determine the compound's molecular formula. So the first thing that we need to do is find the molar mass of CH2O. Okay, and so this is gonna be equal to, if we take a look, let's figure this out. CH2O consists of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. There is one carbon atom, there are two hydrogen atoms, and there is one oxygen atom in our empirical formula right here. We're going to multiply this by the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.01. We're going to multiply this by the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01. And we're going to multiply this by the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16.00. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add these three values together. And it looks like we are going to end up with 30.03. 30.03. Grams per mole. So that is going to be our molar mass of the empirical formula, 30.03 grams per mole. And so now we have to figure out what the molar, or I'm sorry, we have to figure out what the, uh, the molecular formula of this compound is going to be. So the way that we do this is we take the molar mass of the molecular formula and we're going to divide this by the molar mass of the empirical formula. So the molar mass of the molecular formula, it tells us is 180.18 grams per mole. And the molar mass of the empirical formula we just figured was 30.03 grams per mole. And this comes out to be this magic number of six. This is not our final answer. What we have to do now is we have to distribute this six throughout the empirical formula. Our empirical formula, keep in mind, is CH2O. It tells us that in this problem. And so what we need to do is distribute this six to every single subscript inside of CH2O. If we do that, we will end up with C6H12O6. That is going to be our final answer. That is the molecular formula for this compound. Let's take a look at another example. In this example, it says a compound has the empirical formula NO2. So the empirical formula is given to us that cuts down on a lot of the steps. And the molar mass of the compound has been determined to be this right here. So the actual compound has a molar mass of 92.02 grams. We have to determine the compound's molecular formula. So the very first thing we have to do is get the molar mass of the empirical formula. The way that we do that is break this down. We can see that. The empirical formula contains nitrogen and oxygen. There is one nitrogen atom. There are two oxygen atoms. If we look on our periodic table here, the molar mass of nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole. The molar mass of oxygen, if we look on our periodic table right next door, is 16.00.
If we add these together, we're going to get 46.01 grams per mole. So that is the molar mass of the empirical formula, 46.01 grams per mole. Now what we have to do is we have to determine the compound's molecular formula. So to get the molecular formula, to get the molecular formula, it's simple. We take the molar mass of the molecular formula, and we're going to divide this by the molar mass of the empirical formula. So the molar mass of the molecular formula, it tells us, is 92.02 grams per mole. And the molar mass of the empirical formula, we just calculated it. It is 46.01 grams per mole. Put this in our calculator. We will get this magic number right here, 2. This is not our final answer. What we need to do with this 2 is we now need to distribute this throughout the empirical formula. If we take a look right here, our empirical formula, it tells us is going to be NO2. So this is our empirical formula. And what we have to do is distribute this two throughout our empirical formula. If we do that, we will end up with N2O4 as our molecular formula for this compound. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully now you know how to calculate the molecular formulas of different compounds when you're given the empirical formula or if you're not given the empirical formula. Clearly, if you're not given the empirical formula, it's going to be much more lengthy of a problem. But you guys uh, should know how to do that now. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner, and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any, leave any comments or questions in the comments section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.